Hi everybody, I hope you guys are all well. I'm actually going to put my earphones on. Um, I've got my gas fireplace on. It's pretty chilly today. Um, winter is here. And uh, I, um, I battle with the cold, guys. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> I've even got... A blanket that my mother knitted for me so how cool is that I feel like a little African mama today <laughs> the African mamas I just need the little baby on my back uh, anyway no I'm not pregnant just so any of you know uh, so I've started off light-hearted but I'm wanting to put up a moment um, of or share with you that <clears throat> this may be a uh, a trigger point for somebody what I'm about to share this may affect some of you with what, what I'm about to share uh, I put something up well I, I, I did a video yesterday and oh gosh I still have self-judgment to myself and uh, <clears throat> I yeah I decided that I'll do a new one today so let's just park that so just to be consciously aware I'm going to be talking about suicide. Uh, <clears throat> we, <coughs> <coughs> sorry guys, we uh, had a wonderful gentleman in our community that took his life this week and I knew him uh, because he went to our local coffee shop. I didn't know him very well, I just greet him, his partner was one of the beautiful or is one of the beautiful baristas at our coffee shop and I believe that he was taking strain in life and uh, he decided to hang himself on Saturday uh, we found out on Monday morning that that because he was found by his partner and a friend and he was put on life support and they decided to switch the machines off. And I think he was 33 or 34 years old. Guys, I know, being a medium, I know that there are so many of us that have lost loved ones to suicide. I deal with it almost on a weekly basis where I have people connecting with me and saying, you know, they've lost a child parents who'd never ever think that that cycle of life would happen and I want you all to know who are watching this right now that suicide is not a, a coward's way out. Suicide is something that in my understanding of it and um, I've most certainly tried when I was a young girl. I was 16 and a half and uh, I'd lost my best friend she had had a kidney transplant and it didn't take and I took some very strong medication that my mother had in her cupboard. I didn't take enough because here I still am. But I woke up the next morning feeling groggy and I never shared with my parents what I did. But I realized that I had to push through and, and I know many youngsters are feeling a lot. You know, I know, I know a lot of us are working through many different past pain, past traumas that we've all been through. And I say us as a collective because we are. But this gentleman, um, yeah, just, it's interesting, you know, they, there's that saying, you know, the eyes are the the window to the soul and it's true and I used to see him and say hi and he would smile back but I just felt like his eyes never lit up like his soul wasn't lighting up and um, I believe that he had some real past trauma as a little girl, uh, little girl, little boy and uh, I'm sharing this with you here today because it really isn't a coward's way out it's an incredibly, incredibly challenging moment. And for a lot of people who have taken their lives, 
some of them have really thought about it. They've thought about it often and they cannot get out of that space. They just can't. I know quite a few people who have gone backwards and forwards between trying, not succeeding, trying, not succeeding. And they get to a space where they succeed and they decide to leave this physical plane and this physical earth. So why am I sharing this with any of you, with you all today or any of you who are watching this today? Is that times most certainly have been challenging. Please don't underestimate how the last few years have made so many different people feel. Many people have lost their jobs. Many people are, um, have been sick due to the stress. Uh, many people, it's just been, it's, 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 there's been this creation of separateness. But I want you to know today that we are not separate. We are all here in this together. We are all here to connect with one another. We are here to show up for one another. And I genuinely mean that, you know. So if you've seen somebody who's perhaps a homeless person, no looking at them with judgment. You know, stop, gift them a meal, buy them a meal, but even more so, stop and say, hey, how are you today? And I'm talking to myself here. You know, I often say to my children, no judging. And I, I find myself every now and again judging things or judging situations, but then I know I'm judgment, in judgment on myself. But you just never know. Smile at the person who's making you a coffee. Ask them, genuinely ask them, as busy as what they are. Hey, hey, how are you today? You never know what somebody's going through. You just never know. And again, for those of you who have lost someone to suicide, it is not an easy journey. Often the biggest question I get asked is, are they at peace? Well, yes, they are, because they leave the physical plane, they leave the physical body, they leave that, that, that mental torment that they've perhaps had for years and years and years. Sometimes when spirit have come through to connect with loved ones who are here, they share things with them that were never shared before. And, you know, sometimes it's kind of like people will connect the dots and say, oh, that, that makes sense. I've had spirit come through and say that, you know, they were raped and parents never knew that. Now, obviously, we'll never know if that's the truth or not, but I really trust when spirit come through and share what they share because there's a moment, there's a flick of that switch where they lose their light and they don't know how to come back from that. And then we stay in the struggle, or people stay in the, str the struggle of fighting, fighting, putting on a brave face, fighting, fighting, but the struggle is inside, it's internal. But they put on a brave face, and I've been there. And I'm choosing not to go there anymore, hence I'm showing up. Yes, I judged myself for the, the video that I did yesterday. And I just thought, no, it just didn't feel good for me to put it out there, but there was judgment from my side, and my guides kept saying, Michelle, put it out, so maybe I will still. I shared a little bit of what I shared now, but I just, I, I was just all over the place. I could feel that I wasn't present within my body like I am right now. And I cried. For those of you who follow me, I'm very okay with crying. I'm very okay with showing emotion, and that wasn't the judgment. And I've just asked myself, what was the judgment? <clears throat> I think I overshared. That's the judgment. I've been told many times that I overshare. I overshare things. And I've just realized, so thank you. Thank you for allowing me to have the space for me to have that moment. And yesterday I was um, really taking strain with this news of this gentleman that I knew that his soul was leaving. I was shown. At the same time, it doesn't take away from the human experience, guys, of being completely sad for his partner. I believe he had a seven-year-old daughter. Uh, there was some stuff happening there uh, with apparently his ex. And you just never know somebody's story. So let's show up in more compassion. Let's show up in more love. Let's show up in more kindness for one another. Because that's going to make the difference. That's going to get us. That's going to keep us going through things. That's going to help us to, to stay in these shitty, shitty, muddy, muddy, murky waters. Because goodness gracious me, if there's one thing we do know, 
is that life can be pretty shitty. The human dimension, the human um, uh, suppressive energy, the fear that we all can be caught up in every now and again can most certainly affect us. I too get caught up in that every now and again. I too every now and again I'll be riding in my car and then I listen to the radio and then I'm almost intrigued to hear, oh, what's going on in the news? Because I don't. Half the time I do not know what's going on in the news. And my husband might share something or somebody else might share something. But you know what the biggest, saddest thing for me is when somebody decides to leave this planet you never know how one of us could have extended our hand and just said, hey, can I help you? Hey, how can I show up for you? Because the biggest thing is a lot of people, a lot of people who connect with me, who want to connect with loved ones, they often say we didn't know. We didn't know that they were in such a dark space. And, and, and who comes to mind is Twitch. Beautiful Twitch who, uh, who was on the Ellen DeGeneres show. And... You know, I followed him for years because he was on So You Think You Can Dance back in South Africa. And my little boy was, I think, one and a half, two, and we used to watch him dance. Talented, talented guy. He was on Magic Mike. And you just never knew because he always put a smile on his face. But when, when we're in that alone space, when we're in that space of just being by ourselves, and I spend a lot of time on my own, and I know, I know that feeling very well, where you just feel completely, completely, completely taken back, completely oblivious, completely aware, completely, you just go into like a, a, a almost like a little hole and you want to hide away. But then if somebody knocks on the door, hi, smile is on. It doesn't happen to me. No, let me rephrase it. It hasn't happened to me for a very long time. I have moments where I'm still vulnerable. I have moments where I, I cry about my relationship with my husband. I question. I worry about my children. Not all the time though. Please just let me be, uh, kind of put it into context. I have those moments, but I don't sit in those moments like I used to. So to go back to other people and when they're in those moments, they're in such a, they just, they just keep going and keep going until they cannot keep going anymore. So let's show up in compassion. Let's show up in love. And vulnerability is key, guys, key. Vulnerability is a strength. Vulnerability is about us sitting and going, hey, how the hell are you today? And I say that, but I judge myself in my vulnerability. Ridiculous, isn't it? I still do, but though, that's the way I've been programmed. So I'm still working through those programmings. I'm still working through my own. Um, and again, it's not every day. Okay, I'm a lighter version of myself that I have been, gosh, in many, many years. I had somebody who did a reading for me and he said, Michelle, you sit in your emotions. And I was like, I don't know what you mean. But about three months later, I was listening back to it. And I was like, oh, I do. I would take like a, like a whole day to come out of my, my sadness. And I was like, oh, now I just put on music and I listen to a sad song because I can feel it. I can feel the intensity around my heart. And I'm like, oh, I'm waking up and I'll say to myself, I'm feeling a little bit heavy. I might not know what the heaviness is about. It might be, you know, feeling into the collective of example yesterday. And I think that's also probably what, what, what I was feeling into. I mean, I had a client where I just started crying. I was sharing what had happened and I started crying. I said, thank you for holding space for me. I first apologized though. And then I went, actually, no, thank you. But you see, it's a natural thing that we do. It's a natural thing. I'm so sorry I'm crying. I'm so sorry I'm crying. So guys, know that we're here for one another. Know that these recess, recession times, I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly, but they're tough, they're challenging. We've seen things spike in New Zealand. Jesus, the price of stuff is just extreme. I spoke to my brother in Israel the other day and he said also, minces, you know, everything's going up. 
we see it continuously. I'm sure we're seeing it worldwide. I heard in the United States from a lot of my clients that property is expensive. And that's the duality of life. Where there's negative, there's positive. Where there's positive, there's negative. And we're all wanting to find the balance. And the balance starts in here. The balance starts in, you know, when, I, when I'm in that heavy space, put on a song and I cry my heart out. Like the snot is coming and I'm blowing and I'm, the snot is coming. And then I'm out of it. That might be five or ten minutes and then I'm done. If I'm angry, I have a beautiful, beautiful pillow that I punch for two minutes. Doof, 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 doof. But I'm angry at that person or I'm angry at myself for allowing myself to not speak up. And then I'm done. So these are just a few hopeful tools that I'm gifting to you guys today to say, don't sit in it, don't wallow in it. We all know, oh my gosh, I, I, the more I realize or look back in my life, there's more than likely I was depressed for a long time, depressed, but I was fine. I got this. I'm okay. I can handle And I used to question myself when somebody would say, are you depressed? And I want to throat punch them and just go, oh, stop telling me what I don't know if I am or I'm not, because how the hell do we know? But then we say to ourselves, and I never, I think I've admitted it to myself probably two times, that, oh, maybe I was. Possibly, when I've read, done research, I possibly was depressed. But the reality is, is depression is emotions that we suppress and suppress and suppress and suppress, and we don't know how to work through those emotions. Some people have huge lives in this lifetime. Some people have seen some extreme traumatic or lived in some extreme traumatic circumstances. And when someone is in that deep darkness, they don't know how to come out of it unless somebody might take their hand and say, I'm here. And even then, they may take that hand that moment, but then they might spiral downhill again. We've all had moments of being in a depressive state. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming here right now, but I, I can almost probably 95% of us. So how can we stop judging one another? And these times are tough, guys. We all are feeling... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We are all feeling the heaviness, I think, of, of what is being shown out in the world. So again, I'm going to remind you, stop listening to social media, start listening to guys that actually are speaking the truth, who have the knowledge, who are stepping away. There was that gentleman um, in the States, and I'm just trying to think of his name, is it Tucker, 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 Carl, Colson? Amazing, amazing. Those are the guys that you want the truth from because he's going, mm, change. I want change. Jordan Peterson wants change. Br he is bringing change. There's so many, there's so many. So it's, it's finding people that we can resonate with. Some of my stuff might not resonate with you and today is a heavy talk. You know, it's a heavy conversation that, that I'm putting out there. But it's a very real part of life. So the interesting thing is, is that two days ago, I did my Council of Aid community. I was on a high. I was popping. <laughs> and I'm still popping from it because it was amazing. But yesterday I could feel this, the sensation of, <sighs> wow. Not ideal, because the community feels it, the collective feels it, the energy has been felt around us. And I only realized that in lying in bed and re-looking at the video that I put together, I was like, ah, oh, we're all pretty much feeling the same. We we're all on a thread about how we could take, you know, food to the family and uh, give donations to the family and his partner. How do we show up in the moment, guys? That's the key point of reference.
How can we show up for ourselves in the moment? How can we show up for each other in the moment? As every moment is a moment of time. Every moment is a moment of being here in the now. Every moment counts. No matter where you're at, no matter how you're feeling, you count. I count. And for all of you who have really supported me on this journey, gosh, there have been times where I, I go back to reading the comments when I'm having a shitty moment. And I go, wow, I count. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you to all of you who reach out, who send me emails, who comment. Thank you for being here. Thank you for showing up. As we're all part of the collective, I might be sharing stuff and I most certainly still have moments, as I'm saying to you like yesterday, where I was like, wow. Yeah, just judge myself but it was a moment in time. And no, I'm not going to share it. I was, no, I'm not going to share it. I looked old and haggard. I felt old and haggard, but I also know I was feeling the grieving of the community. Because that's how we're all connected. We're all connected into the oneness. So guys, thank you once again. Please share this with somebody who has lost a loved one to suicide. And please get them to reach out. Get them to reach out and just say, hey. You know, and, and, and when spirit comes through, it is incredibly healing. And they get to share what they maybe weren't able to share when they were in their physical body. At the same time, it's not even about that. This message isn't about that. It's about us reaching out, us showing up. And please know that those that leave, that decide to take their lives, it's not an easy decision for them. We know that there's a ripple effect for the families that are left behind. And that's where we've got to show up for those families. So from my heart to yours, all of you that are watching this, I hope that I've shared something that is relevant that can help in some way. You know, that six degrees of separation, we've all lost somebody. We all know of somebody who has lost somebody who's taken their life. And remember, love is why we are here. So from my heart to all of you, I thank you, I love you all, and I look forward to connecting again soon. Bye guys.